Okay, so um, let's say you have finished, you've almost finished um, the modeling stage and you're happy with what you've created, then I would say now uh, would be a good time to think about whether or not this is actually what you want your finished object to look like, even when it's textured. Because once you start unwrapping, uh, to me, it gets a lot harder to make adjustments. Um, minor things such as position and rotations or stuff like that can be, of course, easily changed. But adding new geometry gets trickier because that would also require the unwrap to be adjusted. Um, so by the time I got to this stage, I had the idea of creating a plane that needs some repairing. So I wanted one of the wings to be uh, a little bit more exposed and broken. I wanted to have some loose wires around. Um, and the reason for that was that to me, the plane actually standing on the ground instead of flying opened up a lot more opportunities for small props to be made, such as uh, the little ladder. I ended up having um, a toolbox, uh, the blueprints laying around, these are all things that you know you wouldn't be able to do if your if your plane was in the air and flying. Um, to get the broken wing, I looked up some references, um, and I actually focused on this picture right here because it's really similar to my plane. And uh, I tried to focus on these two, like support bars, kind of, um, and then these ellipses here, that kind of get in the curve of the plane. Uh, so I really wanted to, you know, accentuate these and work with these. Uh, so the way I did that was basically just using splines and uh, tracing the outer wing of my plane. I think this is one of the last things I did when modeling because I wasn't sure that I was going to do it. Um, yeah, so basically you just make a line and then adjust the vertices in the right position and you have a broken wing <laughs> or you have like the frame of a broken wing then you just add two more lines here and then the curve would be in right viewport around here and basically just adjusting the points um so i already did that this is uh the geometry it ended up being, so as you can see, really simple. Just traced around and then added these loops. Um, so now the only thing that's left to do is to actually break the wing, kind of. So what I would do, it has a symmetry modifier. You could also just um, select these edges and connect them and then delete the half. Uh, I go to border mode, I extrude, make sure they kind of fit. You know, for this tutorial, it probably won't be perfect because I don't want to waste too much time on this. But you just try to make it fit, and when it fits, you adjust some vertices. to make it appear more broken and then you bridge them so they're closed up uh, and that symmetry modifier is still there <laughs> so that needs to be deleted bridge yeah. there we have it this is um, our broken wing um, now, for the actual unwrapping, a lot of people use symmetry modifiers, which are um, really handy for unwrapping because it makes you only need to model and unwrap half of the model. But um, with my models, and I know that this isn't very smart or efficient of, my, of me, but uh, I tend to, at a certain point, collapse my modifier. Uh, most of the time I do it unconsciously. Um, and then at the end, I realized that I have deleted the modifier. 
But usually it's because uh, something is asymmetrical or something isn't really, you know, the way I want it. So I collapse it and then I model uh, that way. So what I do when I unwrap is I basically copy this and then I work on the new model and I leave it here as a sort of guide for later. And then what I do is I basically delete every part that I don't want to unwrap twice or that I don't want to have a unique texture. Um, because if I take, for example, one of these bombs and I unwrap them and I give them a texture and then I go back to 3ds Max and they have that texture, if I then copy the model or the element, the object, um, then it will automatically share that same texture space and so share the same unwrap and texture. Uh, so that's why I don't want to unwrap this 10 times. I can just do it once or twice to have a little bit of variation and then copy them around. Uh, so I delete everything that is kind of copied around. I, I delete these little things. I delete the second engine completely. I delete all of these loops I just made. These, uh, this bar here, a lot of this part of the wing is also just copied. I could basically copy this. Um, but I kind of wanted to do it separately to create some more uniqueness, but I don't think I actually ended up doing a lot with that, <laughs> which is a shame because I should have. Right, so when you've done that and deleted everything you don't need or you don't want to texture uh, unwrap twice, you put on an unwrap UVW modifier, you open your UV editor, you select everything, and I choose mapping, flatten mapping, make sure normalized clusters is unchecked. And then you can basically start unwrapping. Um, so I will now show you what my finished unwrap looks like. Um, so this is my file with my final result as well, which is here. Um, so I know that this doesn't look the same as, as the one I just closed, but this is um, the model after it being unwrapped and all the, all the elements put back together. So if I look at my unwrap, um, you can see so the goal of this unwrap, or any unwrap, is to cram everything in this one by one space. And to be honest, um, I probably could have done a better job. There's still some space that could be used better, I think. But it's nothing too uh, dramatic, I would say. So what I do is I think about, um, for example, these parts. They could be overlapping. but when you do that and when you give it a texture, the texture will be exactly the same. And to me, it's really obvious when things are repeating. So the reason why I separated them is because then I could, for example, have some text on this side. For example, the, the model of the plane. Um, you wouldn't be able to put text on there if it was overlapping because then the text would reappear on the other side but it would be mirrored and that's really weird so that's why I separated them and then you can have some unique decals or some unique paint I don't know I think I have like a logo over here uh, same reasoning behind this here but this time I think oh, yeah it's offset um, this is the same so the tail. That's also to save on space. Because if I were to also have this tail separate, then it would take up a lot more space. So you really gotta be smart in where you split and where you have your seams. Um, it's pretty 
inevitable that you will have some parts that will be overlapping, but you can detach and delete. For example, um, the bottom of my wings, they are the same texture as the top but I offset them by one. And of course here they are overlapping because I already copied the other wing back. Um, but I offset them by one because I don't want to have anything overlapping in this space. Because what I will do is I will bake um, an ambient occlusion that will be helpful later when I'm texturing. And generally you don't want any overlapping parts when you're baking an ambient occlusion. Because, for example, if I put a skylight in here, then the bottom of my wings won't have the same uh, light information as the top. So if they are overlapping and I bake an ambient occlusion, what it will do is it will put both the information for the top and the bottom of the wing on top of each other, which will then result in the top of my wing being way too dark. So... The way I bake an ambient occlusion is really, really easy. I just pick uh, a light, go to standard. I pick a skylight. It doesn't matter where you put it. The sky color should be completely white. And the render should be cast shadows enabled. Um, then you go to your environment. Make sure the color is set to white. I, oh, you go to your uh, light lister to check if there's any other light on. And this one isn't checked, so I will put it on. And then you go to rendering. Oh, that's not what I meant. Rendering, render to texture. You select the object that you want to bake your ambient occlusion of. Um... Hang on, yeah. You make sure you use the existing channel set to 1. Project mapping enabled. Um, and you choose a lighting map over here. Oh. And the target map slot should be uh, ambient color. Is that true? I think so. And then um, you choose your size. I made my texture 1K. So I chose 1024 by 1024 and you render. And you will see if I render now that uh, it won't work or it won't look good because, because I already put all of my objects back and I copy them around, there will be a lot of overlapping. Uh, so the colors will be way off. Well, the colors not like the amount of, of shading on there. Right, so uh, make sure you don't have any overlapping parts when you do this. So if you then do that um, kind of right, you should end up with something like this, which is very useful information for when you start texturing because it already shows you where some general um, shadow would be. Uh, and then when you have this, you could do it before, of course, you go to your UVW and wrap. Tools, render. I rendered at 1K because I thought that was enough. And you render the UV template and you're ready to start texturing.